for the chimichanga Sad and run, getting dirty, fly with Adrian and PM Also known as salad, high the comic cat Ooh, pow, got pops like Funka, how you like me now? Eating comics for breakfast, lunch, and dinner A real winner, like DP and Spidey Talking about other superheroes Let's open some mystery boxes and celebrate weirdos Imagination never ends, united through comics, we all friends Everyone, how you doing? I'm Adrian APM, and we got the one and only Gem. Gem and Collectibles. What's going on, everybody? What's up, Adrian? Yo, yo. So today, I figured I would get Gem on with us because I, I, I wanted to ask him a few questions, and I'm sure some of you out there are wondering, "Holy shit! How did he get to 100 k subscribers?" What what's going on? What, what what is the creative process in there? And how can I achieve that? <laughs> you know, that's the that's probably one of the biggest questions. So, um, sure. for the people that don't know who Jim is, uh, if you want to go ahead and just tell them a little about yourself, man, go for yeah, it. Yeah, man. So, I mean, like uh, Adrian said, man, I have a channel here on YouTube. It's uh, a little over three years old now, and uh, basically, I cover a couple of different genres within the comic book collecting hobby. I'm really into statues. I'm into these collected editions, these omnibus, like you see behind me. And I I read and review weekly comics as well. Uh, As of right now, I'm still doing daily content. We've been strong daily content for like over a year and a half. And uh, I I started on Instagram. And that's how I know Adrian. He's being a little humble right now. But we go way back before the YouTube days, uh, which it's a great community. And I kind of built this Gem Mint brand on Instagram and uh, went ahead and started my youtube channel which i'm sure we'll get into what inspired me and everything throughout the conversation but yeah man uh that's it basically daily comic book related content uh big statues collect big books this thing is heavy as hell <laughs> right yeah, yeah so <laughs> that's what we're all about over here yeah so you know speaking of instagram yeah i was gonna say like you know it's funny because a lot of the people i've seen blow up over the years now I knew them, you know, when like you, you know, like you, you're a prime example. Like when YouTube wasn't even quite a thing yet, and mm-hmm. you know, you're just you, you were doing your Instagram game. We we're all kind of just doing our comic thing. I mean, when Instagram came out, obviously we were just figuring it out. Like, yeah, okay, it's social media, right? Or we're just doing pictures, or what? You know, <laughs> you know, we're all kind of just figuring out. Exactly. And uh, you know, and then I know I originally I know you were like you were big into comics, and then you, I guess, when did? Let's start with the comics and when did you slowly start to jump to that statue? Yeah, great question. So yeah, you're right. Like what's funny about Instagram is I, I had a personal Instagram first and I would post a picture of myself and it would get two likes. One was my wife and one was my mom. And then like I would post a picture of my daughter and maybe got four likes, you know, and <laughs> right. uh, and then um I, I ended up, you know, so I don't want to get too deep into it, but I ended up finding this Instagram page that would like share people's pictures if they sent them a picture of them with like a comic book t-shirt on so i don't know why it, i prompted myself to do that i sent them a picture and it had like uh, it got like 100 likes and i was like oh my god i was like that's it i was like let me start a comic book page to showcase my hobby right and at the time i had just learned what cgc was i had just submitted my first books and uh i was really into uh 9.8s like like copper modern 9.8s so I was like, okay, well, what's my my page going to be called? Let's call it like 9.8, but let's do it like N-I-N-E, then point, then E-I-G-H-T. And then I was like, no, that's kind of whack. What if I do the number nine, then spell out point, and then the number eight? Sure. And I was like, new into CGC. So I had already kind of done my research. I knew what a Gem Mint 10 was and a 9.9 Mint. And I was like, nah, screw that. Forget the 9.8. If I'm going to make a page... It's got to be the highest grade, the highest quality, right. and I and I named it Gem Mint, and I started posting pictures, and boom, they would get likes, people would comment, I would respond, I would like their pictures, I would follow them, and uh, it just started growing into this thing. And like pretty early on, I I kind I, I grasped the uh, idea of community and just made a lot of relationships, and yeah, you know, it it was new for me to get into key issues and stuff. So it was kind of like, you know, you're trading, you're buying, you're selling, you're sharing information, and it just kind of all snowballed. Right now, do you find it kind of like uh, what you're talking about with the community? Like, do you find it harder now? I mean, I get it. Like, 
you're up there, man, in the ring. So do you find it harder now to communicate with people? I mean, I, I feel like I've noticed because, you know, you have the Facebook page too. I feel like you do keep that a mm -hmm. good communication where some people could just say, hey, I, I'm this – I'm a big deal. I'm not talking to you, you know, like, so. <laughs> no, I'm not an asshole. No, but uh, <laughs> you know what? I, I also kind of like it because I know that some people would probably look at it. Like if they don't know me, like we know each other. So for you, it's right. no big deal. But like some people might be like, oh my God, this guy replied. So I kind of like them feeling that way. Like, yeah, let me show sure. this guy some love real quick, man, and make his day or whatever. You know, not that I think I'm a big deal or anything, but I just know that they might look at it like that. And that responding to them is just cool, man. Right. What do you still have some CGCs or, or do you, or is there like a box or what do you got now? Yeah. 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 I got a little box, but no big keys anymore. I kind of got that out of my system. And it's funny enough. It's when I found the omnibus format. That's when I, that's when I lost interest in the keys and I I'd rather have the issues that I could read. Uh, and not that I'm one of those guys that are like, comics are meant to be read, never slab them. Like, no, that's <laughs> sure. not true. Comics are meant to be read and collected and bought and sold and slabbed. Yeah. But um, it, it was more interesting to me to have Amazing Spider-Man 1 through 33 in one book that I could read than having it in a slab. I don't know, just – and and then yeah. the collectability and the shelf, the shelf born and all that, you know? Yeah, I mean, your your setup is nice. I mean, we all have to admit, you know, we, we've seen the setup in the videos, and I'm sure everyone yeah. out there loves it. So um, now, do you, I know you, you've – I've seen you talk about, you know, basically – using what you collect to, you know, kind of, I, you, you'll know what I'm saying, how to, yeah, yeah. basically your, the, your hobby funding your hobby. Make the hobby fund itself. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, so like, w what do you recommend for someone like that? You're, you know, they're, oh man, I just can't, but I, I'm in reach of this. And I just, you know, what, what do you recommend someone that's like, oh, I can't ever get rid of that, but they're, they're still searching for that other one. You know, what do you, what do you kind of, what do you want to tell them? I would say, look in your collection at stuff that you don't really have to have anymore something that you don't love anymore like that's how i look at it like when i really want something and maybe i don't want to spend my savings right maybe i don't want to maybe i don't want it to i don't want to spend my real life money i want to spend internet money paypal right. money right. venmo money whatever so right. i might look around and be like you know what i don't really need to collect these x-men statues anymore let me sell all these x-men statues and let's fund this whatever or you know, get out of one line and get into another one. Or there's, there's got to be something. You're a collector, so your, your, your things that you collect hold value. There's got to be something in there that you could part with. Is kind of the mentality I use. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I mean, I feel like I've, I've collected a long time, and I feel like there have been times where I've just, you know, you know, I've had something I love, and I'm like, well, man, would I really love to have that though? You know, where, yeah. and I knew I would just, I'd probably hold that for a while. You know, like. You're like it may not be out in front, but it's definitely in a vault. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. which is a shame because you know how how do you feel about that? Do you feel like now? Because I mean, your collection is very proudly displayed. Like, how do you feel about that whole concept? Where, well, hey, I have those comics, but they're at my uh, bank. You know, and you know, yeah, yeah, same thing. That's why I don't don't ha like having a bunch of you know white long and short boxes or having slabs in a box. I mean, you could display slabs, which is pretty cool too. But it's almost like. Yeah, it doesn't hit for me the same as a library that you can pull a book off and read it or a statue. Sure. The statue has more eye appeal to me than a slab does. It's just three dimensional. It's big. It's the paint job is crazy. Like, you know, it's it doesn't have the same eye appeal for me. And that, I think that's a big reason why I was able to get out of collecting single issues and, and CGC key issues. Now, if somebody offered you like an AF fifteen for like four of your statues, what would you say then? <laughs> if I wanted an AF fifteen right now, I would sell some statues. Like that's how I would fund it. So right. I would definitely do that because I look at it like, man, we're collectors. The yep. hunt is like ninety percent of this thing. So yeah. I've, yeah. I've been looking at these statues for a couple of months to years now. So they can go, and I can get that AF fifteen in. Now the yeah. only problem is then I need an ASM one and an X Men one and a Fantastic Four one. And then it, the whole cycle yeah. starts again, right? Exactly. <laughs> do, do you think that'll ever happen someday? Since you've already been through those, do you think that will somehow, like, it, it'll just kick you like, you know what? Maybe I do want those, you know? Well, first of all, the market now is ridiculous. I'm not yeah. buying any key issues in this market compared right. to when we were buying them. Bro, all those books that we bought and sold and traded are all like triple now it's insane and yeah. something in me will not allow me to pay so much more for the same thing i've once already owned you know right well i mean even like that uh that, you know that um uh, ninja turtles number one you know it goes from yeah i have that third print it goes it goes from being a 800 dollars book to a three thousand dollar book you know or so the, 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 line, the, how that market is just phew. 
the TMNT Archie number one. Yo, I would like to own that, but shoot, forget that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not yeah. A <laughs> So if somebody's just getting into like the YouTube game, either a comic or statues, or they want to start a channel, like what's the best advice you could give them? Because most think they're just going to start and they're going to be huge. You know, they're going to like, oh, I have like a million subscribers. I'm the next this, I'm the next that. Like what, what would you say to someone that's like, I'm just starting this? What advice can you give me, man? Well, I think the first advice is you're not going to be huge right away. So get that <laughs> out of your head. You know, it's funny. And I think, yeah, I think anybody can start a YouTube channel because everybody's into something. You're into right. comics. You're into, uh, I don't know, working out or cooking or whatever. Like whatever you're into, you could make a channel about it. Now, my biggest advice would be to figure out what's the type of content that you're going to create and figure out how to be consistent with it. Now, you don't have to put out content every day. But maybe you find the little area that you're into, like what's your little niche, right? And then figure out how you're going to present it and do it once a week or three times a week or whatever it is just to be consistent. Sure. Yeah, my my, my niche currently is doing celebrity impressions, <laughs> opening mystery boxes, which I heard there's a million mystery box pe people that, you know, so that's oversaturated. But, but I felt like mine was a little... But Adrian, see, that's actually what I was thinking, right? So mystery boxes are hot right now, and people do like to see those videos. So if you're going to do that, you got to find some way to make it unique. And what do you bring to the table that's different than what these other guys do? So that's that's definitely a good idea. Yeah. And hey, when I did the joke, I don't know if you did you see the Joker one by any chance? I, I, I don't know. I think I did. You should watch it because Mark Hamill actually gave me praise. Oh, there you go. And <laughs> what greater honor than that? <laughs> yeah. You know, I was like, I, I wrote to him. I was like, hey, man. It'd be my honor if you would, you know, watch this and tell me what you thought. And my Joker impressions were based off of all your, you know, animations you've done. And then he, he he tweeted out. I was like, wow, that's awesome, man. <laughs> um, so I guess, uh, what what is your what's your favorite thing about doing this now? The the favorite thing about it is that uh, the the sky's the limit with YouTube. There's no salary cap on this thing, and it says you'll get as much out of it as what you put in. So, what I love is the thought that I can do what I love for a living eventually. I'm not I'm not really there right now, um, but my ultimate goal is to just only do this and sure. enjoy it and have what you love be what is you know your income. You it, it's what your your livelihood is. So that's right. what I really like about YouTube. Okay, uh, for for YouTube, then what, what's if that's your fit? What's your least favorite thing about it? <laughs> the least favorite thing is YouTube. <laughs> trying to figure <laughs> out the algorithm, or try to figure out what works and what doesn't work, or it's also one of those things where it's never enough, man. You get to a subscriber milestone, a view milestone. It's, you're always reaching for that next thing. Uh, you're at least for me, I'm always in competition with the people that are above me, and I'm trying to figure out how do I reach the next level. Sure. So it, it it could be frustrated when you start getting data driven. Okay, so I know YouTube can be a little, a little different than people expect. You know, they expect, oh, once I hit like a thousand subscribers, I'll be, you know, I'll be making all that money. I'll be making this, and like, what's the common misconception about how, you know, basically you get paid on YouTube? Like, yeah, for sure, man. There's a lot of misconceptions. First of all, it doesn't matter how many subscribers you have, right? You don't get paid off subscribers. And if I have 100,000 subscribers, but I don't put out any videos, I'm not going to make any money. So the backlog doesn't really make as much money as the fresh content. So the new content that you put out, that's what's going to generate income. And it's very little. It's low. You're making about, well, first of all, let me let me preface this by not everybody makes the same per view on YouTube, right? So I think a lot of it has to do with you're standing within YouTube's eyes. Have you proven yourself to have somebody that doesn't get strikes, that doesn't have inappropriate content? And once you can kind of prove yourself to be ad friendly, your revenue per view will go up. So like right now, my channel is like three years old. I'm in really gr great standings. So what I make per thousand views is greater now than it was when I first started. Sure. So a, a video that I did two, three years ago that has 50,000 views, I might make more money on a video right now that has 8,000 views. You know what I'm saying? So so keep that in mind. And keep in mind that although you you might make something like $6 per every 1,000 views at, at my level, which is not a lot of money, but it does all add up. You know what I'm saying? So sure, it's yeah. something like the more content you do, the the more those $50 videos start to add up to give you a nice little monthly payout. So 
it's definitely a long game, but I, I would say don't get discouraged. Don't expect one video to be your payday. Look at your views maybe more on a monthly basis than so much on a video basis. And just try to make sure you're always in the green and not not in the red. Yeah, I can totally agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, is there any like equipment or anything you'd recommend? Because sometimes people they have a really big budget going in. So I mean, you know, some don't, some do. But like, what would you recommend? You know, man, just start. Don't worry about none of that. I still record all my videos on my cell phone, and I started with the iPhone, whatever, three <laughs> years ago, and I still use the phone because it records in. 4k and it's super vibrant and uh eventually along the way i picked up a tripod instead of just like putting it up on a book in front of me you know what I'm saying? Sure. So you get yourself a 20 dollar tripod from best buy or amazon and then i then then i ended up getting uh some lights some shadow box lights from amazon 60 bucks you got two lights that come with the poles and just recently i upgraded to led panels that my wife got me for christmas uh and then i got the blue yeti mic and you know, I hooked the mic directly up to my phone. So, you know, I started making baby steps as I was going. Don't sit around, wait, say, oh, I need this. I need that. Right. I was I, at first it was this with no edits. Then it was a tripod. Then it was lights. Then it was a mic. Then it was like, OK, I probably should get a laptop and edit this footage. Uh, and then recently I upgraded the Blue Yeti to the Sure mic. And um, that's what it's all about, man. Just the progression. People, I don't you know, I don't think they expect you to be a professional right away. Right. You're going to get people right away that love the rawness of that. And then as you grow, those people get to say they were around since before a thousand subscribers. And then they, they see you grow and improve and, and yeah. always work, on, always work on upgrading, man. Like even myself, upgrading the camera, upgrading the lights. And I kind of want to get a DSLR camera, but I'm just like, dang, the cell phone <laughs> right. is working. You know what I mean? And it I'm looks good. Way, man. I love having the phone, you know? So. Don't, don't, uh, Sell yourself short on these phone cameras, man. These things are are very very good cameras. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, you, you mentioned uh, that your wife got you some stuff. Like, when when did that kind of come about? Like when she started being more in videos with you. So that came about with with starting to do live shows, man. She at first she didn't get the channel, and she was kind of like, "You don't need to do a video every day. Will you stop? Like, what are you doing? You know." She didn't really get it at first. When when the live show started she started getting interested because she saw this community interaction. So she started by just participating in the chats and then she started like being a moderator uh, and then, you know, slowly got her on camera and then just kind of, it was just like a progression kind of thing where she got comfortable with it. Uh, and it's just something that we, we do together now and once a week and we interact with everybody and just, it's fun for us. So yeah, it was a real gradual thing. Yeah. It seems like people do really enjoy it. You know, when I watch the lives, it's, it's the way you guys interact with each other. Is, it's pretty funny sometimes. So it's, 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 it's it go, just goes along with like why people like to watch reality TV and it, it falls into that category. They just, they like to see the real you, like the, you know, yeah. you, you and the wife, like how do you guys, you know, cause you see quirks that you wouldn't see in your videos normally, you know? Definitely. definitely. So, sure. <laughs> um, do you, do you ever, you know, when you get to a certain level or when you, we're starting to slowly see that rise. Like, do you still respond any certain way? I'm not saying you respond to the comments, but did you ever get hurt or want to respond back to certain, like either negative? I mean, obviously positive, or, you love them, but did you, did you ever want to just go, Oh man, you know? So I, I probably read like 99% of the comments, like unless it just slips by me or you don't, I don't really get notifications. If you're commenting, replying to somebody else's comments. So a lot of that right. stuff I miss. I always first grab the constructive criticism, man. I started editing co uh, content because of a hater comment uh, on the video. And oh, I was really? like, you know, it, 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 I was mad and I was like, man, I'm going to show this guy. I'm going to I'm going to edit it. I'm going to get better. It made me get better. Right. Uh, and sometimes you have just straight negative comments that are just straight personal attacks. And I used to always respond, your mama. And that was a big thing for me because I was like, other YouTubers probably don't do this, but I'm going to just I'm going to go back at them. <laughs> But then I found that that kind of got old and that kind of is what they wanted, man. Those kind of people, they want to get a rise out of you. So yeah, they feed off they, of it. <laughs> right. Like the whole don't feed the trolls thing. So if I look for the constructive criticism, I can get out of it. And if they're an asshole, they might still get blocked, but I, maybe I will do whatever they, their problem was. 
uh, or um, if it's just straight negative hatred, now I just block them. I don't even pay it any attention because it'll it'll eat at you, man. Like if I if I try to look at it and be like, oh my god, is my nostrils really that big? Like you know what I mean? Like it'll mess with you all day. So uh, I, you know, I, I I try to block it, but we're human, man. You know, it's 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 right. gonna get you. You got to really try to look at the ratio, man. The good comments versus the negative comments is like. It's a, it's a negative one percent is doing negative comments on there. So right, yeah. I mean, I and, and I'm very familiar with that because back in the day, I had I had a couple of viral videos. I don't I don't know if you remember Break.com, like from way back. Is that um, like pre YouTube stuff or? It, it, it was around YouTube, but it was like around when you oh I'm gonna go to this website to watch these funny videos, you know, which I don't even know if people do that anymore. But right, um, <laughs> and. Then I got interviewed like, oh, what do you think about this comment? What do you think about this comment? What do oh, you damn. People really like to just focus on that negative, you know? That's like a shitty interview, though. <laughs> yeah. What's that? That's like a shitty kind of interview, though. Oh, yeah. I, I, I basically told them that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, hey, I just got paid money for doing a 30-second video. Uh, you can all focus on all the negative you want, man. So, What do I think about the comment? You're an idiot. I think I'm not. I don't know. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm I'm pretty smart, actually. Um, <laughs> okay, so recently you just had a comic book out on Indiegogo. Um, can you tell the people about your comic? Yeah, I mean, I've always been like the type where I'm not really content with being a fan. Like, I'm into comics. Like, I need to see like my name on a comic. I need to be in a comic book. So, I always wanted to do my own exclusive variant, uh, but I didn't really want to have one that was just like a different version from the cover A. Like, I wanted it to be like a gem mint variant so like i knew that i wanted to have like my logo my the gem incorporated into the artwork and i have a good relationship with dynamite and i i mentioned it to them and they were like yeah man we could do that for sure so we hooked up with ken hacer he does art for dynamite it gave him the concept and he he drew the vampirella and uh, we crowdfunded it because you know i, I kind of looked at that like pre-ordering you know i pre-order statues all day and stuff yeah. so a crowdfunding is basically a pre-order so we just got done with the first one. It, it was pretty successful. I think it did like twelve thousand dollars, and um, it's a super low limited print run for Vampirella sixteen. It's going to be shipping, I, I believe, this week. Even I, I already have my copies, so uh, it was definitely a cool experience. Uh, I had no idea how it would um, how it would pan out if my audience would you know support it or not, but uh, right. I think it's pretty good. Yeah, I'm waiting to get mine so I can just flip it. <laughs> <laughs> It might, man. It's a low print run for sure, man. Because uh, we had we, we the backers count. I think we it might even be like a two hundred uh, print run. It's not going to be a lot at all, yo. Nice. Um, Don't quote me on the number, but it can't. <laughs> we, they, it wouldn't be make sense to make much more than that. It's not something that we're selling afterwards. It was kind of like, yo, that was the thirty day window, and that's sure. it. Yeah. Well, I got mine. So if you didn't get yours out there, it's on you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um. Uh, another person that I kind of knew on Instagram um, way back before they blew up, Mr. Tom, Comic Tom. <laughs> mm -hmm. how, did, how did your guys' collab kind of start? You know, because like it was funny because like I've known you, I've known him, you know, and a few others that have blown up. And like, how did what made you guys start, you know, jamming together? I just feel like out of nowhere on Instagram, everybody kept hitting me up, man. You got to you got to work with Comic Tom, Comic Tom this, Comic Tom that. I'm like, man, who the hell is this guy, Comic Tom? <laughs> and when I saw his Instagram, you know, his stories, he kind of right away, I was like, he he has that swag like he already is famous. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yeah. man, this guy is he's got he's got his own thing, his own personality. And um Right away, I'm all about the collaboration stuff anyway, man, because I'm always looking like every video I put out is going to grab somebody every every uh collaboration even this one there's going to be somebody that didn't know me and that's going to check me out so I'll, i'm yeah. always down for like that kind of thing and uh we collaborated and I, th I think at first his audience didn't like me and i don't think my audience liked him because we're so different right. but what I, what I like to see now man we we, st uh, we started doing a, a weekly video together on his channel and it, it, i the thing that i love about it most is when i see his audience they like me now, you know, that's, that's kind of right. funny, you know, because think about it. If you're a comic Tom fan, you're probably not a gem mid fan, right? It's kind of yeah. like yin and yang a little bit, but, um, I, I, I like that acceptance, man. And, um, we got to do more stuff on my channel. We actually talked about it yesterday that we need to do stuff because we, we did like a few chan a few videos on my channel that did really well. I think like 50, 60,000 views and such. So, sure. um, and, and then his channel, man, he, he's got the biggest top 10, 
hot comics uh channel on youtube man so for me to be a part of that and the videos perform well and the audience is uh, receptive so it's been it's been a nice collaboration man for both of us yeah you know because you know watching you guys like you know because I, I watch the videos and it, it is have it's 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 nice having someone so different you know what i mean because you guys are different very much in your own ways and yeah he's got his thing you got your thing but it works so well and i think that's why people if they're at first they're like what is this it's new get away oh, you know yeah, exactly. and they're like well wait oh no i kind of like okay yeah and the thing about tom is how different we appear we're very similar when it comes to how we run our stuff, you know, how, how driven we are and uh, how committed to like improvement we are. And we're, we're very much obsessed with our brand. And and I find so much in common with him with that. Like we talk all the time, man, and and we share our frustrations and our success and how we can get to the next level. Uh, So, you know, I found, you know, and that's probably a good like a metaphor for life, man. Like I found the more I talked to him, the more we actually had in common. Sure. You know, and, you know, speaking of brand, like, you know, you got pretty much, you got apparel, right? What, what else do you have besides like the hoodies and. Yeah. The merch stuff, you know, it's, it's something that uh, is built into like YouTube, right? Teespring, which is super convenient because you just upload designs and they ship it to whoever orders it. So, you know, we have shirts and hoodies and tank tops and stuff like that. And then we have some stuff, you know, Tom does his merch in-house and we have some kind of, you know, collaborative stuff that we do over there and, and we have more planned. Um, but yeah, do the merch stuff. Um, what else am I doing right now? I don't think I'm really selling anything else right now. I'm just really focusing on the channel and, uh, <clears throat> yeah, that's it, man. I had a couple endeavors that I'm no longer really a part of. Like I had an online store where I was selling statues and things like that, but I kind of, uh, really just dropped all that and just focus on the content. Yeah, was there anyone that bought your merch or something that you were surprised that they bought? Like anyone of notoriety or any, you're just like oh wow they got my stuff like <laughs> <laughs> no nah, but, but it was funny tom one time i i wa- i happened to click a video of his that i wasn't on and he was wearing a shirt with my face on it i was like what the hell <laughs> that was pretty funny but not nah, no not with merch but man w- like you have your mark hamill thing and i had uh ed boone from uh co-creator of mortal Kombat. he oh, tweeted that- out my reptile statue video and that was like my crush like oh my god <laughs> yeah, yeah. I grew up reading his Game Pro magazine interviews, and that that kind of helped get a little traction too. Like on that video, I don't know if it brought a lot of subscribers or not, but that was super cool that uh, to see the Ed Boon tweet. Yeah, it's funny, like the little things like that, you know, for for what you do, like you know, somebody that's in the business or somebody you know that you just know so well. And I mean, yeah, Mark Hamill's the name, you know. Then you got someone you know, and that little thing, man, that can give you such a boost. Like you just, yeah. the things I did, like for me, I didn't even notice the Mark Hamill thing right away. Like for some reason I didn't get a notification. I was like, look back, I'm like, wait, what? Mark Hamill, like, you know, watch my video, what? <laughs> so. Yeah, I started seeing like the comments Ed Boone sent me and I knew right away with that man. I was like, oh crap. So I checked it on Twitter and it, it was there. Yeah, but those are all little things on this journey that lets you know you're on the right path. Like, okay, just keep going, keep doing it. You know what I'm saying? Keep improving, keep don't get discouraged. You know, it's not going to be an overnight success thing. I know sometimes people look like they are. People probably look at mine and think, yo, this dude just came out of nowhere. Da, da, da. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. I've been in the mix for a minute. You know what I mean? And yeah. Yeah. and it, it didn't didn't take off right away. It, it did pretty good right away. Like, probably I think I had an advantage over a lot of others because I was on Instagram and I was in the Facebook groups and I kind of people already knew me from like buying and selling and stuff. Right. But I but I still feel like um I feel like the Instagram crowd, it took them a while to accept it because they weren't necessarily YouTube viewers. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I, I I think after a while, they're like, oh, yeah, I don't know, Jim. And then then they came over. But I, I, at first, it wasn't like everyone on Instagram immediately subscribed to my YouTube, you know? Yeah, I, I kind of fall in that same category now where I I try to get my Instagram followers to, to go subscribe. And then you're like, why aren't you guys subscribed? I, I yeah. post a picture of my video. Why? I've only got <laughs> 750 subscribers and over 2,000 Instagram followers. It's like, right? Come on, guys, <laughs> get, get over here. Yeah. And, you know, boost. They'll come, up. but but yeah, I mean, you just got to take those little crowds that you can get until it gets that YouTube algorithm going, and then you know, helps you bubble it up a little bit. Right. Um. So, are are you ever going to go back on tour <laughs> with House of Pain? Yeah, <laughs> yo, I reached out to his management recently. I was like, yo, I need an Everlast drop, man. Like, give me some kind of drop. 
but they never uh, they never replied. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'd be hilarious because, like, I know you fooled a few, a few people about that. Like, yeah. Is this real? Is this for real? Well, what's something you want to say to all the people? We'll we'll, we'll let you go here and in this your your parting words for all these beautiful people watching. Yeah, man. First of all, thanks for taking the time to watch my conversation with Adrian. We go way back. Thanks for having me on this channel. If you guys are interested in any of this stuff that you see in the background, what are these big books? What are these statues? Uh, and if you want to hear my thoughts on the weekly comics, come check us out, man. We do daily content. And we're always doing big giveaways, man. We just did our huge 100,000 subscriber giveaway. And now we're doing a giveaway for our next milestone of 110,000. We're giving away a Killing Joke 9.8. So swing on by. Well, there you have it, ladies and gents. The man, the myth, the legend, Jam Mint. <laughs> Follow him. His information will be below. Um, you know, if you go subscribe to him, if, you, if, you, if you're not already subscribed, please do go subscribe. And obviously tell him Adrian APM sent you because I want people to know that I sent them. <laughs> so, well, again, hey, man, thank you so much for uh, for chatting with me. And uh, uh, the best of luck to you. You know, I'll, I'll say when you hit 200K, which I'm sure will be in no time now, um, you're just going to keep on rising, man, and keep doing that awesome content because it, it is fun to watch. So, Appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me. Peace out, everybody. Peace.